Hall Superstar, 12 time Tag Team Champion of the World. This egotistical bastard is ready to shoot the shit as Sean Walsh presents The Sean Walsh Show. Where there are no holes barred. So controversial and also too chilled. 41st edition of the Sean Wall Show. We are back with a very special episode. We are having on COH's Zane LaFontaine, YWS Seth McInerney, or as I know him, Stu. A man who has yet to be on the show until this very day. A man that has been in very much demand. To be on the show. And I give in to demand. Stu is on the show today. So I think you guys are going to really enjoy the content. I think you guys are going to enjoy the stuff that we talk about. He answers the questions that you guys have been wondering for a very long time. So look forward to that. That's going to be pretty freaking awesome. Um, Over the course of the next two weeks-ish... The uh, next Call All Star special event will be coming out. The event will be headlined by two main events. One being that the Goonie will get another opportunity. The Kingdom of Call winner, the Goonie, will get another opportunity at the Call All Stars Championship when he goes and faces AJ Young in a Call All Stars 8 rematch. Also, in another Call All Stars rematch, Brandon Wolf will take on Sean O'Connor, but here's the catch. Brandon Wolf's Call of Stars Rumble opportunity, his championship opportunity that he won from winning the Call of Stars Rumble, will be on the line. There will be more announcements to to follow for this event that you can get all the information on the Call of All Stars Facebook page, facebook.com slash call stars. It's that easy. You can type it in all by yourself. Go ahead. Do it. Go ahead. Now, for those who aren't, it's probably because you already like the page and you're smart and you know this is where you need to go. So if you aren't one of those people, why don't you join us? Facebook.com slash call starts. Get all the information right away on the Facebook page. Now, it is the holiday season, so I'm in a little bit of a giving mood. For all the great fans of the Sean Walsh Show, and because I'm hoping those who haven't liked the page yet will do so. So I'm going to give you guys already the satisfaction that you're going to go already go do it. So I'm going to give you guys a gift, and that gift is I'm going to tell you guys some of the upcoming guests. On the Sean Wall Show, because the question I get all the time is, "Who is next? Who's next on the Sean Wall Show?" I most I wonder if I have a bunch of Goldbergs as fans of the show. I'm wondering, am I am I going to get beat in a minute and twenty five seconds? I certainly hope not. That would be that would be awful. But I'm going to tell you guys who's next. The next show after this show will have on a guest returning to the show. That is the owner of CCWO, Sean O'Connor. He's back. We're going to talk about um, various different things. We're talking about AWF, CCWO. Um, we're going to talk about his comments he made on the last show that were all very controversial and you know hurt some people's feelings. And we're going to look back and and see how they are today. I really encourage the people who who think they have it all figured out. They think they know the guy off of like the what the hour that they heard of him. I really hope that they didn't listen because I think you're gonna find out some things that you didn't know. We also kind of travel back into the old days of call, and we have some nice discussions about some of the older call shows. So if you're a fan of that stuff, you'll enjoy it. Even if you're not from that time, 
might be not a cool listen. I'd be interested in that. And obviously, I'm a man of the people. Um, who else will be on the show in the coming weeks? Um, we're gonna have on a returning guest in uh, Fisk, my friend Andrew. Also, Drew Cutler in DCW, and he, the owner of ECF. He's gonna be on the show. We'll talk about various different topics. Um, we're gonna have. This is a guy that a lot of people have been wanting to have on the show. Maybe he he's up there. Uh, you know, neck and neck with Stu of two people who haven't been on the show that everyone's like, oh, you got to get them on. And that is Kevin Cross. Or in PCW's Kevin Wonderman, formerly Kevin Crisis. Kevin is going to be on the show. I can't wait for that one. I really cannot wait. Um, a man who will be returning to the show, but for the first time will be a solo guest, will be the Alex Enterprise. And one more name? Is that what I hear? One more? Okay, I'll give you one more name. Daniel Mars will also be on the show. And, the, and these guests will be scattered throughout the next couple of months uh, for the remainder of this year that will probably only be the this episode and the Sean O'Connor episode um, after that you can look for these throughout January, February maybe even March who knows but there's a whole lot of other guests that I just give you guys a short list there's a long list but I'm not going to give you guys all that because I'm not going to tell you guys on a, a guest that won't even air to maybe like May Let's not wait till May. Let's go to our special guest right now. Go to my interview with Stu. So, let's get to it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Sean Wall Show. I'm joined by a very special guest, a man who has been very much to man throughout the whole time that I've done this. Stu, Sane, LaFontaine, Seth McNerney, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me on, Sean. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to have you. You were, For so long, everyone would tell me, when are you going to get Stu on? I'm like, I'll get, I'll get it. Don't worry. They, were, they did not. Really? Okay. They, there were people who, would, who asked me. They were like, oh, you got, you got to get Stu. This, that'll be interesting. That, that was like, you and Kevin are the two. I'm like, you got to get those guys. I, I I mean I can I can understand Kevin, but uh, I mean I I I appreciate it. I'm honored. Stu, you're but over. It's, 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 okay, fine. God damn it, fine. I have the, I have the biggest dick in call. Um, I am I I am basically called Jesus. Um, now why would I why would I disparage my own name like that by comparing myself to Jesus? That's silly. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll think of I'll think of some other self-grandizing shit. I can't do that. <laughs> All right. All right. Well. Well. Anyway, you're welcome, viewers, listeners. There's no viewers. This is a podcast. So, in the comments below, say thank you. Um, <laughs> right. Thank you. All right. So, you've been in this uh, call shindig for quite a bit now. It's hard to believe, but yeah. You know. Yeah. This little little tiny world to call wrestling. Now, did you first come in from like? Coh, and like and YWF guys, because I know there was a lot of guys who came from YouTube, and then like, I think it was Travis and and Mark were like, we're gonna do shows, and then everyone's like, okay, we'll join. I I did have a YouTube channel, and I did the whole YouTube shooter I thing. And I was actually, yeah, I was I was plugged uh, by Spinternet once, which was kind of interesting. But um, yeah, it was a it was a channel, and I, I had a decent number of subscribers. It was back when like getting five hundred subscribers was kind of a big deal in the in the YWC. Now it's just like any thirteen year old who has verbal diarrhea into a microphone can get five hundred sus- subscribers. But that speaks more to the community of YouTube and like how much it's grown in numbers than uh than anything else. Um, when I first started, 
And uh, I had no idea really what CAW was. I was just kind of linked to YTCW uh, shows. And this is back like before I was even talking to Steve or, or Travis or Alex or any of them. Uh, back when Kristen was involved. Um, I was just kind of on the outside looking in. I wasn't connected with anyone. I just started talking about things. And eventually I got bored and stopped because... I'm, you can only hear the same thing from so many people, and I just felt like I don't know what else I can add aside from commentaries on certain things. And in re- in really, just people are just reporting the news and giving their opinions on them, and just kind of got boring to me after a while. But CAW, I got into it, uh, just kind of messaged uh, David for YTCW, and that's the thing that not a lot of people uh, know, is that Zane LaFontaine was supposed to start in YTCW. And um, I don't know if you knew that necessarily, I but yeah, yeah. Um, I was, Zane LaFontaine, in fact, was featured on a YTCW video wire, and he was to debut after uh, their big fuck off pay per view, the second edition. I think it's WrestleMania, which is like wow, you know, you, you couldn't have come up with another name. But um, l- looking back, these are the sorts of things you uh, you uh, you get put in your brain. Or you just kind of think about, but you don't think of it at the time, right? Um, but yeah, well, Zane LaFontaine was supposed to debut in YTCW, and he in fact had his debut promo on a YTCW video wire, and it was basically just me with a mask, and I was holding up signs because it's like I don't know, I want to do something different, I want to do something funny. Like I, I was Zane LaFontaine was going to be a comedy character. It's just going to be me, like turned up to eleven, and it kind of is to this day. But uh, it was just going to be a comedy, like, straight out of, like... I was basically ripping off Paul London. Like, even the nickname is a Paul London uh, send-up. Um, but all I did was, like, hold up signs. It's like, I'm here to kick ass and do other things. You know, watch me and all that sort of stuff. And whatever thing I thought was funny, but probably wasn't as funny as I thought it was. Um... And soon, that's when the whole thing with, uh, I don't know if you've discussed this on the show, but the thing with Travis and, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, it, tra- Travis getting kicked out of YTCW, the circumstances behind that, that happened. And so he started COH, and then uh, the first episode happened, and I wasn't really sure what was going to happen with Zane LaFontaine, because, uh, I don't know, I wasn't married to the idea of doing call still, or CAW, however you want to however you want to call that. But I wasn't married to the idea, necessarily, but you know, I saw the first show, and I thought, wow, this is really cool. And then I said, uh, I asked Travis, hey, do you have a spot for Zane LaFontaine in COH? Like, I wouldn't mind doing it. He said, hell to the yeah. So, and I was on the next event, which was Legacy in the Making. And uh, so COH's second show. So I wasn't there from the very beginning. Can't say. Close enough. Yeah, you know, ballpark it, I suppose. Yeah. Now, a lot of people from from then who were in YTCW don't have the fondest things to say about David. Uh, do you? What What are your experiences with working with David? Um, there's not many. Uh, I can't say that he was necessarily a bad guy. I don't know. I he, he could he could be a, a difficult man, but whether that was because he was just difficult or he never communicated what he wanted very well, I could never really ascertain that. Um, I know that he was uh, okay. He was willing to uh, give me a look, and I had um, I had another idea for him. And actually, that was another guy that debuted in YTCW. Was another character that I have that's still kind of looking for a home. Uh, El Inmigrante was a. Uh, was conceptualized as a YTCW guy, and he was going to go over for their uh, for their version of the cruiserweight title. Um, plans on that, he kind of I guess just changed it in the middle of uh, doing his doing the match. I don't know, but uh, it didn't work out, and YTCW just kind of fizzled off into nothing. Um, so I never really did anything with El Migrante except for like cut a few promos, which in which I just made him a comedy character, because fuck it, why not? And uh, at that point, uh, I don't know. Just I mean, I, I, I found that David was an okay guy. 
I have nothing bad to say about him, but I don't really have anything good to say about him either because I just don't know him all that well. That's really all it is. All right. So from there, you you went into COH. Now, was was YWF, was that shortly thereafter, or how, how far apart was entering YWF? Hmm. Now, let me think about this, because, no, y, YWF, um, and you're talking in, in reference yes. to Seth McInerney, correct? Um, Seth McInerney didn't start out in YWF. It started out in, a, in ACW, okay. and that was... Uh, this is Justin oh, Collins. God, what's his name? Thank you. Yes, I think, yeah, 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 I'm pretty sure it's Justin Collins. And a guy who I think had a gift for commentary, really. Like, I loved him on the mic. And he, like, he actually had passion and energy behind himself. And I think that if he wanted to get himself into the business, he, he could have uh, given it a shot. I'm not really sure what happened. I never really kept up with, uh, with Collins much after that. But I would have liked to see uh, what he would have done in the, in the business itself. Um, I'm getting off topic. I'm sorry. Um, so I started out in ACW, and that was when of uh, I don't know. It was just kind of starting to find itself, and they said, "Oh, we got a partnership with Machinima because that means a whole lot nowadays." Um, and I think our total takeaway was like thirty-seven cents, which is about on par for Machinima. So um, I. I never, I never saw, I never saw a single cent from ACW, and I'm gonna <laughs> sue the hell out of Justin Collins. God damn you, you fucking carny! I'm calling you out. <laughs> gonna, gonna get a sponsorship and not pay the boys. That's some carny shit. Um, <laughs> so anyway, um, but no, he was a cool guy. And then uh, at some point, I guess Marco Rose just kind of acquired ACW. And it became a part and just kind of fell under the YWF umbrella. And that's kind of how I joined YWF more than anything was Marco Rose's acquiring ACW. And he asked if I still wanted to be a part of it. It's like, hell yeah, why not? I don't know Marco. And uh, my first match in uh, YWF, I lost to Garnett Cole. Oh, oh, so. Wow, what a way to break you in. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that was a. Uh, that was the plan for was for me to uh, I don't know if I I, I went I don't know if I went over him for the Intercontinental Championship. The fact that Garnett Court held a fucking title, goddamn. Um, but I don't know if I went over him for the Intercontinental International Title, excuse me. But uh, more or less, I became the champion, and you know, I just started. Uh, that's how I got my start in YWR. Okay, okay. Um, how how did you find at least like from early on because you're going into YWF with some guys you're not familiar with working with Marco and and Chronix because there's an interesting dynamic that they have there with the both of them being in charge yeah um working with them was great I uh I presented ideas and sometimes they'd say yeah we'll go in a different direction but they'd always listen to me and I don't get I don't know if they always listen to everyone but they listened to me, and I and I uh, and I respected that. That's uh, that was very cool of them to do. I know that they didn't have to either, because uh, at least at least uh, in terms of myself, I definitely have a vision for what I want to do, and I don't really like being broken from that. So when someone wants to get in your grill and start talking, like, "Hey, I want to do this. I want to do that," it can be a little uh, disconcerting at times. So and I get that, but they're always willing to listen. And that was okay. really cool of them. Um, now. Overall, the Seth McInerney character, there's, it's it's different from the Zane LaFontaine character. Um, how did you like playing that character and playing up like that side of things? I um, it was it was really fun. To this day, it's still my so favorite you just character that to play over Zane LaFontaine. because, well. Zane LaFontaine, I felt like, uh, I don't know, sometimes I have trouble figuring out what direction Zane LaFontaine would go. And really, with Zane LaFontaine, I do need a lot of direction. Um, and and Travis will, like, he'll pitch ideas to you. And I was like, this is what I had in mind. Just kind of roll with it. And I'll like, okay, I'll roll with it. 
With Seth McInerney, I feel more like I can do more, and it would be, and if something is a little off the wall, if something's a little crazy about it, that's okay because that's in character. So that's kind of my feeling about uh, Seth McInerney. It's a little more liberating. It's a little more uh, free, and that's kind of by design, really. More, N- not not anything to do with, uh, you know, who runs the company or like what anything like that. It's more just by design. Seth McInerney is kind of more of a wild card, even though Zayn LaFontaine is uh, as well. But just by nature of the characters, it's kind of an anarchist. You know, everything must burn. Kind of fucking. Molotov tossing motherfucker that uh, Seth McInerney can be. That's just kind of how I uh, okay. kind of how I feel um, about it. Now this is interesting because we ended up using this last year for a Call All Stars match with uh, Seth McInerney and the Alex Enterprise. There's there's a lot of talk. I know when yeah. Alex w- was on the show about who came up with it first, how what happened from your side. How did how did ha- how did this happen? Did he just take it from you? Um, I don't think he took it from me. I think we, I think what happened is we both came up with the, the, the same idea and he didn't know that I was doing it. And, um, really it caught on fire really when, uh, in COH, but when I was doing it in YWF, I was paying, uh, I was paying more attention to doing YWF and doing, Seth McInerney, and also, like, you know, balancing that with doing Zane LaFontaine and doing the whole fucking Hell in a Cell, which I thought was a great match, and so did a lot of other people, which I certainly appreciated the the feedback with uh, a lot of people in that. So basically, I think what happened is he didn't like, he thought that I was jacking his style. And really, I don't think that at all. I don't think anyone was biting off of anyone. I think that we have two very different interpretations of how one would view some kind of crazy anarchist character. And I don't think that we're very similar at all, honestly. I think that he has his. I think he has his way of doing it and interpreting it, and I have mine. And I think they come across very different. Like just saying, like, what's your character, anarchist? Okay, that's. That's really simplifying it. I don't agree with that at all. Like, you're, his character is distinctly Alex Enterprise. My character is distinctly Seth McInerney. I don't see the issue at all. And I, I, I get the feeling, like, he knew that I was doing it first. But he, I don't think he knew until it really caught fire in YWF. So I don't think he was biting anyone's style. And it's, uh... I don't know. I, we we've we've talked about it, and it's really cool. And I'd love to do another match with them, you know, just to prove that I can do it better. Now, how, how did you? Because uh, I remember, because you know, that when Alex said it on the show, like it was, I was in the room, and obviously, obviously, and how did you? Like, how did you mm-hmm. feel? Well, in that hotel, like, room. watching yeah. that. That that camera was used yes, for much more was. nefarious <laughs> things later on. I I. I beat off to it every night go ahead how did you feel when you watch and you saw alex kind of like i mean i don't know if even if this is even the right way to to call like in a way called you out picked a bone with you on camera how did that feel Mm -hmm. watching that it made sense because he was right like i'm not gonna dispute anything he said other than the fact that i'm a good guy because i think i'm total shitbag but whatever um because Alex is a, a great dude, and he's up front with you. Really, like, if if you suck, he will call you out. If he doesn't think that you're living up to your potential, he will call you out. And being the driven individual that he is, I expect no less of him. Um, overall, I think he hit the nail right on the head. Like, call um, is not my first priority. Like, my first priority is my life. <laughs> like... I will uh, fully admit that. At the same time, I get that I could do more, and sometimes I do get a little lost in the shuffle. And that's uh, that's definitely a problem of mine. It uh, plays out in real life as well. But, you know, I, I definitely get where he's coming from, and I can't really dispute him on anything. Just that, uh, just that I, I think that I'm a little uh, better than he thinks I am, and I'm eager to prove that. 
whether it be in call or in in life. But he's a great guy, and I think he kind of gets the where my motives lie. Okay. Um, since we're since we were just talking about uh, Alex, it will tie us into here. Er- earlier on in COH, what uh, a lot of people remember is your f- feud with the Alex Enterprise and also with M Accuracy. For there's a lot of people watching this who maybe weren't viewers of COH of that time and missed what was really special about that and the whole how that whole thing came about and how it changed along the way like so for for those viewers explain like what happened with this rivalry well basically i don't even know how the whole inaccuracy zayn lafontaine thing really started i mean it was back when i was the internet champion and uh, i had just gotten it back for the second time cuz my first uh, my first title win was actually uh, I, I tapped out Patriot, and I no 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 I tapped out a uh, it wasn't Patriot it was Christian Storm, Christian Storm and it was at Summerfest remember Storm. him yeah right no uh, yeah I uh, I never talked to him much but I I remember coming across him and Chris Blaze uh, in like this one sync tube that I, that I found out about through uh, through Wu the, the the wrestling image board. And we would just watch LCW. It was like, oh my god, these are the best yard tards ever! Holy shit! And uh, it, it was, and it was pretty magical. The things that they would do, and <laughs> I don't, I don't know if it was always the best kind of magic, but god damn it, I loved it. Um, but Christian Storm himself, great guy. Chris Blades himself, good guy. And uh, I, I beat him for his title. I think that was his last match in COH, but. Um, I immediately lost the Patriot, and then I got it back, and then I was internet champion for a second time. So, really, what happened? <laughs> wow, that was a hell of a tangent. So, basically, what made it cool, I guess, was the fact that I don't know. Maybe it looked real. Maybe it felt more real. But, um, he the the angle was basically they kidnapped me and beat me up. And he took uh, my internet title belt and gave it to Alex Enterprise and deemed him like the heir to the Accurate Enterprise throne or some bullshit. And then, uh, you know, came back and it was it was pretty tense between me and him accuracy. And I thought it was a really it was a really really good blow off match at a what was it the Honor Rumble that year, something like that. Yeah, and what what I found weird about it was that they just had a, me and Alex at a Hell in a Cell. I was like, wow, that was really, that was really cool, and I'm glad that we blew that off. And then all of a sudden, I hear Hell in a Cell, Zayn LaFontaine versus Alex Enterprise. I'm just like that seems out of nowhere. Okay, um, I mean, I guess in the end it worked out, but I just felt it, it took me off. It took me by surprise and barely cut any promos on that and I felt really bad about it but he um ultimately we made it work and I think it was uh one of the greatest things all year it was really intense and um and accuracy and the Alex Enterprise has been going hot ever since all right all right now I remember shortly after that time or around that time was like the the OBN era of of COH, mm-hmm. which you know you have some people that have some nice things, some bad, some both. O- overall, because I was one of the guys that that came in, there was a big uh, amount of guys that came in. Some stayed, some were just there for the angle and gone. What did you think of the OBN angle? It definitely overstayed its welcome. That much I could say. Um, and yeah, a lot of good things came came from it. Uh, Coh got a lot of really good, really good talent from it, and I I felt good about a lot of them, uh, particularly uh, particularly you and Sako and uh, and Rudo, honestly. But uh, in fact, I pitched to Travis that hey, maybe I should drop the title to Rudo, 
and so he did. And he was he was against that. He fought me, but I wanted to give him a chance. Um, so ultimately, I think uh, I think it turned it was for the best that it ended when it did. I think it could have ended a little sooner because when you have a group that size and only some of them cut promos, there's no real reason to keep a group that big and unwieldy around. And that ultimately becomes the problem, and that's a limitation of CAW, honestly. Is You need to make sure that these guys are all going to be involved if they're going to be on such a big angle, because otherwise they're just, they're just video game characters holding their dicks. Essentially. That's, that's what it becomes. And uh, Nate can only do so much. Great guy, great talent. He can only do so much. So OBN, uh, it, it probably could have been more, but you know, it's for what it was. I guess it was okay. Hopefully for the future, when uh, and I, I don't think Travis has done this again, but should let the guys know because I, I speak from um, personal experience. Besides, like Travis, Nate, and AJ, nobody knew. So we were just, uh, we yeah, we really? so we got. Li- Oh yeah, AJ. Yeah. Shit, he, I love that guy. Yeah. He was he yeah. was in on it. He knew, and because we were just, a lot of us were just we were over in CWS, so yeah, that was the whole idea so behind we, it. We saw it because there was always like, I mean, because Nate and Travis are friends, so they would kind of like you know joke at like, oh, they're they're the competition, and and then they we saw mm-hmm. a link on the on the CWS page. We looked those boys <laughs> up north, and we looked, and we're like. Um, okay, I and I half the half the group was kind of like, oh fuck this for not telling me, and and just didn't do work. Mm-hmm. So people like me were like, well, I guess I'll do something. Although I thought it was a CWS invasion and that was the story, but uh, and it just I just went with it. So and hopefully Travis learned from that as well. Yeah, I felt like it could have been it could have been, been a lot more and. I hope that uh, Travis learned his lessons. Uh, then I know you you did like uh, you you teamed up with Stephen Copeland for for a while, yep. and not too many people really look at that. At least, at least from what from what I see, like everyone like they talk about like uh, Seth McNary, they talk about you, Alex, and Macuse. They talk about every everything in the last like. Year, year or two, but like Stephen Copeland and like that that them never gets talked about. What did you think about the the team between you guys? Well, background is that Copeland was the first guy in YTCW to really reach out to me, and he said, "Dude, your first pro like there is no such thing as a perfect first promo. You had a perfect first promo, and <laughs> that was that meant a lot because I loved watching Copeland." Um. So I guess he just kind of let me be the promo guy when NATO did eventually become a thing. And he did kind of talk me through like what to do in terms of my first feud in COH, which was with Mutatron, who's now, I want to say Calvin Barks a lot, who Mutatron, who by the way, owns MWE, where I also had a character. Um, the Polish Lion Borisław Dudek, which is honestly some of the funnest, some of the funnest promos I ever cut. Or an MWE, and I loved it. Um, I don't know how many people watched. Excuse me, watched it, but fuck my life, it was fun. Um, anyway, like he, but he talked me through it and and all that shit, and it was really cool. And we were like joking about fucking tag teams, like oh yeah, we should be a, totally be a tag team. So I came up with the name, the North Atlantic Tag Team Operative, aka NATO. So it's just like, yeah, NATO invades COH. Why not? Um, just because I have like the – that's a geopolitical joke for you <laughs> uncultured swine. God damn it. Read the, read the news sometime, fuckers. Um, yeah, honest to fuck. So um, yeah, me, uh, Copeland and I were in the finals of the first ever tag team warfare. And I was uh, – I think we lost uh, – we lost to Nate and Mark Vicious, which, man, I really, really wanted a tag team title run with uh, with Copeland, but 
Uh, that'll have to wait. I'm I'm open to uh, like be helping out in the tag team division because I don't know. Not many people cut promos as a uh, as tag teams, and I feel like that there's potential there for something fun to happen. Uh, but yeah, Copeland's just overall a great guy, and the run that we had with NATO, like, and we were kind of an on again, off again team because Copeland was kind of getting his singles thing, and he also wanted to get out of CAW after a while. So, and so he did. He's living life over on the other side of the pond. And uh, he just overall is a great dude. And I wish that we did more, really. Because uh, it was fun working with him. And it's always fun talking with him. And Copeland, if you're out there listening, I love you like a brother. For real. Would it have been cool uh, if you guys got to do more? Because I mean, you guys were a team. I remember, you know, being when Ego was young. Um,. We we're like, oh, NATO, that'd be cool. Mm-hmm. But then, before anything could go, could get going, you guys kind of moved to your own, your own thing. You're doing back to singles full time, and around there, what? That was around the time of my first internet championship push. Yeah. So, you know, I it would have been cool, but I guess we wouldn't have had uh, some other stuff happen. That that was also pretty cool. Like l- later on. Um, in towards the end of your like first run with COH, you won the honor rumble, which was which was mm-hmm. awesome. I remember yeah. wa- watching it with a bunch of guys. We thought it was great. What what was it like for you then? Or because I know later on things it was it was different. Like was it like that then, or then were you still like into it? Well, like, like what was later like what? On when, towards the end, when you were kind of you, you were focused on life, and and then you ended up and you ended up leaving COH, but and it just call wasn't a priority for you at that time later later on. So like at the honor rumble, was yeah. it was it that then, or? No, I mean, it, honestly, it was never really like that. It just kind of faded off after I never really got anything to do. Like, I just kind of felt like, okay, I'm, I, I won the Honor Rumble. Now I'm sort of on autopilot for the next eight months. What the fuck do I do? I want to do something. I'd love to do something with Zane LaFontaine. I just, I'm not the guy that goes up to someone and says like, hey, I have this idea for a thing to do. I feel like that's a little self-centered, and Travis has enough people in his ear already pitching him shit, talking about some dumb shit that they want to do. Like, oh, I want to be a combination of Brock Lesnar and CM Punk. Shut the fuck up, you mark. Um, He has enough people talking shit like that already. He has enough people doing the same shit already. I want him to direct me because I want to help his show however I can. And that's really my main complaint with Travis is that sometimes I do feel adrift uh, in in COH. I'm not really sure what to do. Um, in some situations, I kind of feel like I'm hung out to dry. And I like I love Travis, and I, I love him as a booker, and I feel like he does a great job with COH. I don't know if there's a guy that works harder in CAW than Travis. I really don't. So if something like falls through the cracks, like I get it, it happens. Um. I just feel like it's happened to me a, a couple of times, and that's really my that's really my one complaint with the guys. Like he's a he's a good dude, he's a funny dude, and overall, I think he's genuine. That's really all uh, all it comes down to. Um, but I felt like that at my at the end of my run is like after I won the honor rumble. Okay, yeah, what do I do? I'd love to do something. I know I'm in the main event. Do I just? But Patriots doing something. Do I just cut promos on Patriot? Do I just talk shit? Like what? I need help. So ultimately, I don't even think I remember anything that I did with the, well, the you, like, world title feud. Kicked, out, kicked off but, like really with you and Patriot it was like, all right, it, it's the ball's rolling. You were just kind of there, and sometimes really not. Because I remember we like talking to other people. We'd be like, where's Zane? Like he, like you weren't really in a program. Usually, like in WWE, if someone wins the Royal Rumble, they're they have like a middle program before their WrestleMania. And 
for Zane, it was just kind of like, all right, you just wait till Patriot and and Alex do their thing. Yeah. Was this 2014? Yeah. Uh, and it was like at the end of 2014, especially like I was really kind of immersed in my uh, in my aspirations in actual professional wrestling. So I wasn't really sure what to do with uh, with CAW as well, and I think that the two just coincided, really in the worst way possible. Because it's like, okay, I'm doing all of these things, and I also need to concentrate on uh, on CAW and my real job and all that sort of stuff. It's just at some point, COH just kind of fell by the wayside almost because I was doing nothing. And that's a horrible feeling because it's like I know I'm there. I know I just won the honor fucking rumble, and yet I don't feel like I'm doing anything. That's a shitty feeling. Like I, I get that sometimes. Like I mean, even now with like certain programs and stuff like that. But I don't know, man. Like it's it's nothing horrible. It's just I kind of wish that I could do more, and I wish that I could help more. That's really what it comes down to. Um. At the, at the end of my time there, I wasn't sure what I was doing. I felt adrift, and it's like, yeah, I'm in a world title program, but now also uh, M Accuracy versus uh, Alex Enterprise is happening, and that's a big deal because they're cutting promos on them, and they were built. They were built. <laughs> I cannot stress that enough. They were built. So that's... And, and honestly, they earned that spot. Like, good for them. They took it right out from under my nose. Like, no hard feelings to them. Just uh, wasn't really sure what to do with the world title. Okay. Now, That's all. I know during that time, because this was in, waiting for Ultimate Glory, there was the whole Patriot and Alex uh, rivalry for the, for the world title. And Alex lost the title and went to feud with some accuracy. And Patriot went to feud with you. There was some people there. I, I would say there, there's at least a, a half portion of people around that time, from what I talked to, who are like, who thought it was going to be you and Alex. Everyone thought that's like, oh, they're going to, they're finally going to come back and and fight, and then you would. I was really excited for that. You have no idea. I thought it was going to be that too. So we all thought alike. Is that so? Is that what you would? So I'm, I'm guessing that's like from from your mind. You were thinking that's what you wanted. Like you were like, oh, this would be great. Mhm. Exactly. Like that was that was kind of my whole thinking. Is like, oh man, it's my final revenge, and I get to do this big thing. It's gonna be awesome. But but then Alex loses the title to Patriot. It's like I worked this already what do i what do you want me to do i did this i i have could i have anything less to say right now honestly um it was disappointing for me and i don't know if i ever i don't think i ever voiced it to travis and that's another thing because like i don't want to be the guy that complains i i already i'm in his ear enough about my fucking gimmick and about my gear because I have a very particular view on how I want Zane LaFontaine to look. Um, but it's... Uh, I don't know, man. I, I, I feel like it could have been so much more with me and Alex actually building something. I've built something with Patriot. And I'm proud of what I built with Patriot. And then you give him the world title and I face him in ultimate glory. Like, what else do I do? Like, it's you can't just do the same thing but with a belt around his waist. They try that in WWE with Rock and Cena. Hey, here it is again the next year only with a title on the line. Didn't quite work out as well. So that's kind of my... Uh, that's kind of my thinking on that. It's like, if something's been done... Yeah, you know, there's such a thing as the law of diminishing returns, and that's that's kind of how I felt about yeah. my feud with the Patriot. The second time, first time was brilliant, and I felt like we had something great. Second time is like I just wasn't sure what to do. Like I said everything. Should I have Patriot to say to you. At, at least at that time. 
Should he have won the world title, or do you think that was the wrong choice? It it was the wrong choice. It should have stayed on Alex. And it's not it's not a knock to Patriot at all. Um, I I did, I dug his character and the fact that yeah yeah he never won a world title before. Absolutely, and that sh- it should have been rectified at least up to this point. But I feel I felt like uh, it was kind of Patriot gets a world title for the, for the sake of Patriot gets a world title, and that's never a good thing. It's like you know to do it because oh yeah this never happened. Sure you get the strap. It's almost it's almost dismissive, and it's not really that great a thing to say about a talent. Really, it's like it's almost like oh yeah fuck this guy. His world title run means nothing. Of course it of course it means something, but it just kind of felt. It felt like it diminished his title run because it felt a little out of nowhere, you know? Like, it, it, it takes away from him. It's like, what? He's world champion now? What the fuck? Like, I get that it's very, uh, it's very much going for shock value, but I don't think it played out as right. Travis would have anticipated. And that that's that's really all it is. It's like, yeah, you know, he, he sure, Patriot's the right guy. It's the wrong time. He's the right guy. It was, sure. I think what, which was a big problem, so like it was a cool moment, but that's really all. It was a cool moment. There were after that, it was like, oh, so I don't know. And, may, right. and maybe in a way that that hurt a lot of things, but I think it hurt Patriot really. Like I yeah, it it definitely fucked my mojo up. Because, okay, what the fuck do I do, really? Um, at the same time, I, I felt like our main event was sort of dead from the start because who really wants to see Zayn versus Patriot as a as a big blow-off like main event thing right now? Especially when you have the b- even bigger fuck-off main event, Alex versus uh, M. Accuracy, which has been built for a year and a half. Like, you just want us to dust off the thing that we made six months ago and use that again? It didn't like, make much sense. And it's a shame because we definitely did have good chemistry. He was always good at working with me. But um, I just felt like more could have been done with right. myself and Alex. Uh, at that now, time. the Ultimate Glory match, you, you lost, Patriot retained the title. Was it supposed to be that you were supposed to win the COH championship? I was supposed to go over. Yes, that was the original plan. I was was supposed to go over at Ultimate Glory. Um, And then I felt that should only happen if it's the main event. That's a big event. And having a world title win in something that isn't the main event is bad for the title. So I refused to go over at that point. Um... That's when Travis dropped the condition. If you don't, I don't know if I can have you back. So I said, okay, I agree with that. It's time that I focus on uh, ring announcing anyway. So uh, I walked away at that point. And I felt like that was the, that at was the that right time. Point. Because it was, it was odd from the outside looking in when it was like, well, like even though we, we saw, okay, so, like you, you were obviously you know focused on your life and and whatnot, which you know people understood. But then like it all happened with. Was there ever, I guess outside outside of call, I guess would be with you and Travis. Was there ever any like, I, I don't, personal like frustration or anything like that, or was it just it was what it was. None on my end. I mean, the the guy is as understanding as can be. He's as cool as can be. Uh, no frustration. Okay. Um, so obviously you knew before beforehand because I remember right after Ultimate Glory went up, you you posted uh, the video which said that you said that you were you were leaving, and we we're like, whoa, which was weird because mm-hmm. you you left right after. Um, Alex, le- um, he ended up leaving because he lost the retirement match to Immaculacy. Uh, Copeland left, and 
and then right. Morris was gone short. Well, for, he can't, he's since come back, but for after shortly after he he left. So it was like all these guys that have been there for a while were were leaving about the same time. It was weird. Yeah, I, I do remember uh, someone bringing that up offhand. And then I was like, oh, wow, that sucks. I wish it were my problem. Psych, no, I don't. Um, but uh, watching it since then, and for the, the limited amount that I did watch uh, in my hiatus, I felt like there was a void that needed to be filled. And that's a good thing because it means more people can step up. And it means that people can fill that void however you know like however travis sees fit so people like brandon wolf they stepped up people uh eventually nitro ultimate nitro stepped in um you know i i feel like uh uh yeah thaxton stepped in stefan guerrero he stepped in uh I feel like that it, it ultimately turned out pretty decently. So, you know, all in all, can't really right. complain too much. In a way, it was a blessing. It worked out for the best. It helped a lot of other people out to to get maybe where they wouldn't have. So yeah, it was in a way it was a a blessing in disguise to let those let those guys you know move on up, which was which was pretty cool. Now, here's an interesting one: when Alex lost and he was retired quote unquote a lot of people from who I talked to didn't buy it there was like okay for now we'll we'll see you when you come back for you when you left was did did, did you think for now or you think this is it I thought I thought that was it really I thought I thought that was it really um I had no real other plans to come back. Um, it was just kind of, you know what? I'm good with uh, with the whole experience. I'm good with CAW. I'm fine. And all in all, I can focus on real life professional wrestling because that's what I want to make my life's work. Okay, that's now- really what it was. Uh, when when you were gone, and even beforehand, I mean, I think this is pretty cool that you know you're, you're starting to make ground in the real wrestling world. How, how is that like? Just as a wrestling fan, mm-hmm. you know, growing up and seeing that, and now being part of it. Oh, um, uh, man. It's it's still weird when you know people say to me that you're in the professional wrestling business because I don't quite believe it myself sometimes. I I'm just a guy that talks in a ring. Like I don't know how that makes me any more part of the business than I don't know any other dude that walks to the ring with a suit. And maybe that's just because it's me that I'm talking about. It's like what the hell am I doing here if anyone? But uh it's been it's been so cool and it's honestly like changed my perspective on things a lot because yeah you do see it on tv and like the people that i looked up to like uh i mean obviously you had a character very much influenced by paul london uh just or some of my other favorite wrestlers booker t rob van dam uh billy kidman tajiri um just all of these people and like and now I've, i've actually like started to meet some of them and also people that heavily influenced my childhood. I mean, the Blue Meanie is uh, one of the trainers at where I am now, the world-famous Monster Factory in Paulsboro. It's uh, Paulsboro, New Jersey, by the way. It, he's, it's just incredible, the fact that you get to meet these people and the people that you see on TV. And not only like you know, meeting the people who have uh influenced wrestling's past like blue meanie or or bill wiles and all that stuff and just so joel gertner who's an incredible person um but also here i am name dropping like a big timer <laughs> no um but also just like meeting people who are the future stars 
and you know who are going off to Ring of Honor and are getting looks from WWE and TNA. It's just it's incredible to be a part of it, and I I'm just fortunate to even be along for the ride, no matter what my role is in in this grand scheme of a okay. professional um, wrestling. What's like the biggest thing that that you learned, like now that you're in there, that you didn't see as a fan? Of uh, wow, um, really? That the the things that you see as a fan is two percent of wrestling. Two percent of it, unless you count like the shoot interviews and all that. In which case, maybe three percent of it. Because I'm telling you, like ninety percent of it is ninety seven percent of it is all. It really is all about how you conduct yourself. It's about how you prepare yourself. And so much work goes into that three to five minute little match. And those squash matches. Yeah, you see that guy for like two or three minutes before he gets pummeled by Braun Strowman or whatever. So much work was put in to get to that two minutes. And it's just a lifetime of things. Like, I know people... And I have worked with people who have worked WWE squash matches. Britt Baker, who was the first, uh, who was on the first episode of the New Era, uh, self-proclaimed New Era, Monday Night Raw. She was the she was the MFPW's girls champion. Uh, I what a good friend of mine, uh, a good friend of mine, Turk knows. Uh, I think uh, Brandon Groom, who was on SmackDown and was uh, was used as an enhancement talent. Like, squash matches are back, and it's helping us. It's helping the next generation grow. And that's what wrestling needs, really, more than anything. It's just, like, chances. You know, it's like, you, you, you don't, how do you, how do you let, how do you make a minor league play, ball player better? You know, you bring him up from, you bring him up from Pawtucket and send him to Boston. Let him play with Pedroia. Let him play with Ortiz. That's how you make him better. Like you, and that's happening now, and it's great. And I feel happy to be in the minor leagues, even if it is just as a, as an announcer. It's still weird to think of myself as like part of the business because I'm not. I feel like I'm not, but also I am. You know, like it's. It feels so like egotistical to say and weird. You know, it's just like I'm not that guy. <laughs> even though I'm name dropping like a fucking clown. <laughs> what about um? Because I, I'm sure you've had some interesting incredible moments but what's your most memorable uh moment since you've been in pro wrestling um i got to do the mini dance with blue mini in the ring i can die in peace knowing that um <laughs> in all seriousness um, really, I can just point to individual. Sh- I can point to individual shows or events uh, that I thought turned out very well. Um, I can point to being in front of Gerald Briscoe um, when he came into the Monster Factory and, and gave everyone there a look. I can point to meeting some really great people, and uh, I can talk about developing a friendship with. Uh, with some very very influential people in the business and it's 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 hard to point to any one thing but i guess really like my first event is what i'll remember the most it was just this uh it was at this promotion out in gilbertsville pennsylvania which I know you i don't i know i know you're a pa guy but it's so it's right it's right outside of pottstown mm-hmm. Is where this is, if you're familiar with that area at all. So, um, I, I don't know if you're East or West PA, but whatever. Anyway, the uh, it, it's just like in this rinky-dink farmer's market with like a really low ceiling. So, no top rope moves. This is this is old school wrestling, y'all. So, uh, <laughs> and by that I mean they, you know, it's like 15 minute matches with eight minutes of walk and talk. So, um. Basically, the first time I stepped into the ring and announced a match, 
And I was like, wow, this is off my bucket list. I'm good. And then I had the realization, <laughs> oh my god, there's ten more matches. <laughs> that, more than anything, I think is uh, what I remember the most. I do keep two items from when I first started out. Uh, my first pay envelope and the first pay envelope where the promoter spelled my name right. Which I think was uh, five months That's later. Good. Yeah. I figured it out. Yeah, it's nice. Now, okay. Yeah, it's here, nice. Here's interesting because I... <laughs> yeah, you're big time. Because because I'm such a huge deal now. <laughs> yeah, you should. Yeah. Do you do you realize what Sean had to pay to get me on his show? Like, I mean, the booking you fee alone, me. Yeah, guys. Me come on. Empty load. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Send all your bookings to, to <laughs> Stuart Campbell Future, Ende- Future Endeavor <laughs> at hotmail.net. Oh, man. Now, I don't know. Sorry, what's a more obscure server? Um, ah. No, uh, Netscape. Netscape. Dot yeah, netscape.gov. Oh. Dot, dot yes. Oh, my. Well, with being in wrestling, because I've talked to – um. Uh, doc, the doctor, because he, you know, a few years back did did some work w- w- in OVW. Uh, so, and he, I don't know if you you got to do like what he like he did, like because he he talked to the guys about call, and he and he and he got to hear what you know what the pro wrestling industry thinks of call wrestling. Have you ever mentioned call wrestling to to them? Nope. Uh, not really. Never really nope. Uh, not really. Just never really talked about it. Just kind of figured it was uh, something that um, was never really talked about. And, you know, the, the the workers, they do their thing. The marks do theirs. And I just kind of figured it was left at that. Um, n- never really figured to ask about it. But I know that call wrestling has helped me in the wrestling business, just in the sense that it helped me get over stage fright and it helped me learn to cut promos like i cut promos for caw and granted there's no there's no time restraint like i mean if (laughs) if there were a time restraint oh my god some of the people in call would never ever survive it was like we gave you 30 (laughs) seconds and you went eight goddamn minutes what the fuck like just shit like that and you remember oh my fucking god gilmore like i'm I'm, I'm, I'm honestly, I feel, I feel as if there are a few people in ROH that would want to throttle the man. He does. And probably have because he attends. <laughs> so, holy shit. Um, I, uh, I don't, I don't know. I, I feel like, um, it's helped me really just be able to talk and wrestling has required me to get better at it. So, um, it helped me learn to enunciate and it helped me learn to understand like where a character comes from, helped me understand motivation. It helped me understand how to achieve a certain goal in terms of, you know, being within the character anyway, like what's the character searching for? How do I get it? That kind of thing. Like through a promo, through speech, go, that sort of deal. Um, it's helped me tremendously. And I, I got to cut a promo um, in in front of Abyss at a seminar, and it was it was really fun. I was told that I did a good job. I refused to believe it, and uh, I guess it I guess it uh, it has helped me garner a little bit of attention. I'm really happy about that. So, call wrestling has helped me, but I don't know <laughs> if I'd like ever admit it to wrestling, anyone in the business. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, it's 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 yeah, it's like it's my version of uh of backyard wrestling, exactly. <laughs> I'm I'm uh, the Josh Matthews of now. Paul. I believe because last December, right? That was around that time. That was when I saw you in person. You know, shoot here for people. You know, there's yeah, there's, we you can see p- each other outside of a computer screen. Um, and I that. T- 
He's just as ugly. As At that time, people, you I were promise you. you were still out uh, of of COH, and I remember then like filmed some some promos and some cool stuff, some really interesting promos. I also here, here's some insight. I remember on the car ride home, I was talking to Travis, and I was like, "Oh, is you going to get?" Stu to come back, and he's like, oh, I don't know, and, I'm, and I was like pitching him ideas and everything, and, I, and I'm like, oh, he could do this, and he's like, oh, maybe, we'll see. What, <laughs> from then, was it already, like, were you already like, I want to come back, or was it after? When was when was it cross your mind, or like, maybe I should come back to COH? When it crossed my mind was about when I was cutting the promo. Uh, that's really it, because like I figured, hey, you know, it'd be a, it'd be a good uh, it'd be a good world building tool because Travis was doing this thing where he's like, oh, he's going crazy and he's losing touch, and so what better way to reconnect himself with what he has lost? than a person from his past like that's like general writing 101 and since i'm there since i'm hanging out with you i figure that it would have been uh it would have been helpful to do that so i don't know i was like hey maybe i can uh maybe i can cut this promo and like oh my god talk about a Talk about time, like time cues. Yeah, it was for what six minutes. Um, I, it was it was never meant to be that long, but whatever. It, it's you're you're working in the realm of uh, of call, whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, I, it was right around then. It's like yeah, I felt like maybe there is something else for for me to do, but I don't know. It's it's something to think about down the road. Not really right now. I, I just hope it helped okay. develop the story, uh, and I hope it so worked. That's all. Then, then later on, you end up, you, you come back, what? Not just like oh, little Zane cameos. Um, you came back and you and you joined this whole, you know, the eradication story where, where wrestling Jesus dropped the ball and Zane Lafontaine came to save the day and and pick up the pieces, and and now you and now and now you're back with. I mean, a lot of similarities, but in a way, a different COH. And like you know, like AJ, like AJ called it like in that in that promo on the draft show, like he called like oh, this is like yeah. a new generation. Everyone like has used that. But like it, in a way, it does feel like it is a new era of it. Like, what what's it like being with the the guys that are here now? It is a new era, but it's kind of an era that has yet to be defined, really. I, I don't feel like there's any real defining factor to it at the moment. Um, and that's that's a shame, because there's certainly the talent there. Um, it's cool being... It's, 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 it was cool to be a part of it. Um, I'd say that there's a lot to be done, but, you know, there's... Who 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 can say hey you know done everything whatever? Uh, no one, <laughs> no one really can except for Ric Flair. He's done everything and everyone apparently. Um, so the <laughs> woo, <laughs> and here's where I bury myself. Um, <laughs> in in all seriousness, um, I think there's a lot of good things going for uh, for Travis and everyone. That's uh, that's there right now, and as for myself, you know, I'd like to, I'd like to do, I'd, I'd uh, like to do more. Um, That'd be cool. N- now, uh, I hope I'm giving the chance. We just mentioned you come back when you were gone. One thing you were do, I I noticed, and it looks like you were just having fun. But like on the COH page, even though like Zane Lafontaine was gone, certain guys like whether it be Owen White or it be uh, Stefan Guerrero. You would interact with those guys, which is funny. Like obviously Stefan knew who were, but like guys like Owen White, who were like newer to the show, didn't know who Zane Lafontaine was. How is it interacting with some of those guys? Right. It was fun. Um, Stefan Guerrero. 
is a cool guy. I think he's a I think he's a little full of himself, but whatever. Uh, you're bound to get that with just some people. Um, but but he's a he's a good guy. I think his heart's in the right place. Just needs to smarten up. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, and and Owen White, I didn't really know much about him. So I guess uh, I guess we were equal in our amounts of knowledge about each other. Um, and really, what I what I'm doing, like it, what I everything that I said was all like I meant it, and it's not like coming from a point of harshness. It's coming yeah. from a point of hey, you should suck less. Okay, cool, thanks. Um, and I know it didn't exactly come across that way, but again, I don't care because at the end of the day, you I, you're either good or you're not. And if you want to be good, you do have to get ego out of the way. And it's it is hard to do that. It's very hard. To, like well, one thing that a, a certain person uh that i'm that uh i'm very familiar with says quit trying to get your shit in so and that's that's really what it is it's like are you here for the good of the product or are you not and that's really the thing in caw is like okay yeah you won a title congratulations you didn't do shit aside from sit on a computer and occasionally record yourself on a webcam you didn't do anything to really earn that title. It's like, oh yeah, this is a hard fought title. It's like, motherfucker, it's a video game. Like, it's it really is a video game, and it's done for the purpose of telling a story. Like, if your character is over, that's great, and you should be proud of that. You you absolutely deserve to pat yourself on the back. But then there's like, you know, I'm the biggest damn deal in CAW and my character is over and I cut the best promos and I'm, you know, this and that and the other, like no one gives a shit. Help the show. Like, or, or, Oh, my favorite. <laughs> I'm, I'm like the biggest badass in CAW. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> like I, I, I don't want to waste the viewers, the listeners time doing this but just imagine me saying shut the fuck up a thousand consecutive times that's how i feel about that <laughs> and that is such an overdone thing it's like anyone can talk in a droning monotone monotonous voice i think that's been made very evident by the amount of wrestling uh personalities on youtube but uh and the ones that are good the ones that are good the ones that actually do shit like brian zane or the what culture guys? Mm-hmm. They're the ones that distinguish themselves. Remember remember when XBA caught fire and he was the hottest shit ever on YouTube because he would actually interject some personality into his act? And he had a little shtick. It was at like opening a fucking soda can or whatever uh, at, at the beginning. That was the – like, and I didn't necessarily – uh, I wasn't like a, the biggest fan of XBA, but I respect it. But I respect him because he distinguished himself, or oh, or oh, whatever that. Sean's view did. I don't know, whip his dick out or something. Yeah, I, I didn't. You know, I never really thought that the YouTube wrestling community could have a could have a <laughs> rock bottom until I found a YouTube wrestling community guy on YouPorn. So that was that was um, wow. That's a that's a magical magical threshold that he has broken um <laughs> god that's it was it was so small too what the fuck um so <laughs> back on topic basically uh I, so I, I how did we get know. from how did we get from caw to sean view's dick um i don't know but 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 speaking of fluffing of egos these guys who have to be <laughs> who have to be badasses in caw I just don't get it. Like, ultimately, you are playing a character, and there's like, there's five MMA gimmicks, there's twenty giant badass gimmicks, there's fucking fifty demonic gimmicks. What the fuck else do you have? Be a character. Like, don't be afraid to play something. Like, don't be afraid to like. 
okay, you imagine yourself as a big, tough guy. That's cool. We all do occasionally. And then we go in, we break in, we have a bar fight, we fuck the girl, and then we ride off on our fucking Harley. We, I get that. But offer something else. Because, you know, it's fun to play characters. I don't oh, like being... Uh, it's, great. it's weird that my most successful characters... And I'm sorry for this rant. I do apologize. But... Like, the most successful things that I did were Zane LaFontaine, which is basically a Paul London ripoff that became me, which is uh, weird because I I think I influenced oh, too many things after Paul London, really, because uh, I'm a big, giant fucking mark. And Seth McInerney, which is basic generic anarchist who, you know, makes Molotovs and bathtub Semtex in his spare time. And it's weird because I feel like those are the most standard ones. I played a... I, I've also played a a white pseudo pimp, um, a Polish guy that mispronounced the names of sports teams in order to get cheap heat. Um, basically, cheap heat the gimmick. <laughs> I've also played. I played a fucking white Rastafarian, and I don't know. And I also play an El Generico ripoff that learned English off of conspiracy websites. That's... I, I am amazed that those haven't caught on as much as the two where I'm just talking regularly. I am astonished. And I wish that more people would do something outlandish because, you know, it's fucking fun. Like, it's fun to play a character. It's fun to not be yourself. And if you want to be, like, a droning badass, I'm the toughest guy in COH, it's like, oh, first of all, if you're going to do that, never appear on a camera because that takes it away instantly. Secondly, like, why just that? Like, look how much fun Dalton Castle is having. Look at how much fun Adam Rose had. Look at... All the th- fucking things. Like, one man gang when he became Akeem the fucking African dream. That was fun as shit. It was dumb, but it was fun. Like, you can do so much more other than the thing that everyone else is doing. Why not do that? Like, why not make call... Really, really fun. Like, even if it is just a hobby. Like, okay, you're doing something else with your time. Like, you're you're working a job. You're going to school. Why not break out and play a crazy-ass character? Learn something. It's okay. <laughs> you know? Yeah, but hopefully people... I promise my rant's over all, I agree with all that. I mean, in one way, when I before I did this, I was thinking... I, when I was like, all right, what, what can I ask? Now, one, I was going to ask the stereotypical question, but I'm going to twist it in a way. Um, cause everyone always wants to know who of the new guys is doing great. And then you get the, everyone says the same thing because like, oh, you can always, you can only say Brandon Wolf, Hopkins, all these guys so many times and until people get it. Uh, I know you cause uh, based off of the, the rant and based on what I see on the page, you see these guys and whether they're just sucking or they're not doing the right things, are there certain guys that you can think of that are just I don't not doing the not doing the right thing or just doing the same old same old they're just wasting people's time okay um I will call out Brandon Wolf because I think he can do so much more than he's doing that's really all it is it's like I like him I have never talked to him personally, and I think that he's, from what I can tell, he's a good dude. I don't know him. I've, Like I said, I never talked to him. Who am I to judge him? I think he can do so much more with Brandon Wolf, and I want him to do more. Um, something needs to be added, and uh, he's, he's a good dude. He's a good dude. And I think that with what he's done is is good. And I think that he does deserve uh, whatever good uh, comes to him. But, you know, eventually he's going to hit that wall where it's going to get stale to some people. And you're not going to have all the attention on you. 
what do you do then? You adapt. And if you don't adapt, you fucking die. So, yeah, you're good. Sometimes good enough ain't good enough, get better. And be prepared to do that. Because I think that he has a very bright future ahead of him. Uh, whether he chooses to stay in CAW or do other things. I think uh, I think he has right. a lot um, of good things ahead of him. Now, here's someone he that's been, more. been in the news. Uh, maybe not for all the, the great and right reasons. Oh. <laughs> oh. Harambe? Great. <laughs> Love him. No, no, but... My, my dick was out the entire interview. Now, obviously, with the, the interview that I did with uh, Adam Jackpot, that certainly... Uh. Adam expressed his opinion, and what so a, lot of, a lot of what he said is, is not just what he thinks. There's other people who, ha- who don't like... Sure did. Maybe how the Patriots conducted himself in certain words that he's used. You uh, Obviously... You know the Patriot and and this whole thing very well. What do you think about this whole situation? Is because it's pretty big. Um. What? Yeah. What? Whether the criticisms are valid or not, I think the entire situation is overblown. Uh, people tend to forget. Uh, I, I don't. I don't know if we're if we're. I don't know if we're peeling back the curtain too much, there, good brother <laughs> Sean Walsh, but uh, this is this is a work. It's all a video game, and you know we're ultimately getting ourselves worked up over characters. And the thing that's easy to forget, and it is easy to forget sometimes, is that we are not who we how we portray ourselves. Um, if I were Seth McInerney, I'd have been arrested by now. Um, if, and if I were, in fact, uh, Zane LaFontaine, I would probably <laughs> be in an insane asylum. Um, <laughs> insane asylum. Holy shit. That's a, that, that is a horrible t-shirt idea. Okay. Um, so anyway, I feel as if some things are overblown and yeah like the the patriot has every right to be invested in this character because it is a creation of many many years and whatever direction he has taken i feel like is irrelevant because ultimately those are just the aesthetics i do think that people like i i feel like there's nothing that couldn't be resolved with just meeting up in a coffee shop and talking. But ultimately, the nature of the internet and it being this sort of like international information superhighway, we may not have that luxury due to distance. So things do get overblown. And, you know, words on the internet all of a sudden become the opinions of that actual person and that it's it really do, can get very convoluted what i'm trying to say ultimately is that i do think that it's not as big a deal as everyone seems to think and i know that you're you're like i i know it's not controversial i know it's not like this huge uh you know revelation it's like oh yeah you guys are fucking marks fuck these assholes or whatever um i don't know i i, I get the feeling that it's not as big a deal as some people make it out to be, and that the guy is a. Uh, I think all parties involved can do themselves good by taking a step back, and if personal things get involved, it's really just symptomatic of what I'm talking about. But uh, ultimately, taking a step back, taking a deep breath, and that's something I had to learn how to do myself. That has saved my ass. Um, I think. The individuals involved in this situation um, could do could do no, well it's, in it's doing okay. that. I mean, I I don't know. I had a, I had I've had. It's not controversial. I'm sorry, person. man. It's okay. But and you probably pissed off someone along the way. Don't worry. It's okay. Because people have feelings. I guess what I'm trying to say is, uh, kill the 
All right. Okay, there we go. I guess what I'm trying to say is uh, kill the Asians. Oh, no, Jay's mad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, crack. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Paul Pot was right. Um, <laughs> we can edit this. Um, um, no, nah, in, in now, all seriousness, like, well, uh, we take a chill pill. In this interview, call it's it's not real, and I mean like it, it's it's fake wrestling of fake wrestling, like it's faker. You, you know, yeah, but then these world titles and all this kind of stuff, in, in the yeah. grand scheme of things, yeah. don't really mean anything at all. Uh, they're just pixels in a video game. Um, but it. <laughs> Take it from two time internet now, champion, champion Zane LaFontaine. Uh, titles all of mean, the titles nothing. mean nothing. For, like, something that we, you know, people put work into when, like, the boss is like, oh, yeah, here. In a way, it does mean something because it doesn't, but it does because, like, here's for – you're doing good. Here, here's something to be – good job. So if, if that makes sense. Now – Yeah, it's, it's something that you invest yourself in personally. That's and, and and it sucks when you get criticism on it. Like especially when you put yourself on on a public platform and you get yourself criticized. Like humans weren't built to deal with that. Like we just weren't. Right. So I like now, I get it. But in the right you know, time and see it's, it's kind of good to keep respect. A lot, sometimes, a lot of so. a lot of a lot of friends, you know, went on to win the the, the world yeah. title, whether it be. M. Accuracy, Laguni, Alex, all these people. And Zane LaFontaine was always a guy who, I mean, at Ultimate Glory, he was he was right there. I originally was was planned to win it. He, he was always very close, but never won the title. Did it, does that just, it, is it just, it is what it is? Or did, does it in a way it bother you that you never, or not yet at least, never got that? Right. Well, I did get it in YWF, but it's uh, that that's something else entirely. Um, it doesn't bother me. Actually, I I feel like there. If 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 there's anything that I can do to contribute, my my main thing was like, I kind of wanted that title the first time because it was like, oh, okay, yeah, Zayn Lafontaine's an internet champion. I'm cool now. I'm okay. I got it out of the way. I don't really need a title to justify myself. And it's really kind of like one of those things where after you get it, you find out that you didn't really need it. Um, in a way, I did because I had to realize it. But at the same time, I don't mind it as much because I, I'm I'm able to contribute and I'm able to help. And whatever it is that the that the show calls for, and if I'm able to provide it, then I'm doing something, and I'm happy. Like that's really all it is. Like I, I want to be involved. I want to I want to help, and that's really all it is. I do think um, more than the prospect of being called C O H World Champion. I'd be more excited to be called the only... I'm, I'm more excited to be called the only repeat internet champion. I think that's really cool. Um, I think what would be cooler, actually, is three-time internet champion. I'd be really excited to try that. Although, hey, man, if I'm needed, wherever I'm needed, if, if it's in a mid-card thing, if, I, if it's working at the bottom of the card if it's in the tag team title scene or if, if i'm needed for a main event program i'm fine with whatever i'm just happy to contribute and if i think i can provide something i'm more than happy to do it because you know ultimately it should be fun and that's kind of the idea of what we're trying to do like if you're not here to have fun lord knows you're not trying to do it to be tough because i feel like uh 
I feel like some people tried that and they just wound up spouting nothing but wrestling catchphrases and insulting dead children for 15 minutes. All right. Um, All right, uh, now let's move to my... my As long as we're here having fun, you know, whatever. Name association. Uh, let's start the, okay. let's start off with a name. They're all cunts. Be careful what you say, because a lot of people are very sensitive about this. Ray Gettys. Okay. Okay. No, no, I'll, I'll be sensitive. Uh, fuck that bitch. Um, no, <laughs> I'm sorry. What, I'm sorry. What'd you say just now? Um, no. In all seriousness, uh, Ray is a cool dude. Like, I mean, we, we only chatted a, a few times. But I'm a big fan of his promo work. And uh, because, again, he does something and he means it. Like, is it a bit copycat-ish? Yeah. But whatever. You know, we all take influence from something. And honestly, nothing is original anymore. So whatever. As long as you have a good point of reference and you make it your own, fuck it. Do it up. And he's a, and he's okay. a good dude overall. Uh, and he cuts a mean fucking promo. So <laughs> I, I agree I with that one. The guy. I agree with Fuck the Cowboys. <laughs> uh, yeah, they, we're, we're, we're doing we're doing a little internet Phoenix. fist bump here. So just uh, there you go. I met him in person, and I thought he was a cool dude. Heard some rather unsavory things about him as a player. Um, I met him in person, and I thought he was a cool dude. Heard some rather unsavory things about him as of late. Um, I don't know. Just I I feel like if you have a problem with someone, you bring it up to to them. Um, if it, if it has to do with something, uh, creative on the, on the creative side of things, like on the show, whatever, you know, like you could bring that up with them. You may not. It, that's, that's up to personal preference. Cause you know, like I, I didn't want, and Lord knows I didn't want to be chirping in Travis's ear all the time. Um, but if it, if it goes into something personal, you gotta bring it up, man. Like that's, that's not cool to talk behind people's backs. I mean, I, I, I like the guy. I think he's funny. I think he's a good dude. Um, just, I don't know. Might just right. need to grow uh, up a little bit. Degree, so, uh, I'm, sure he, I'm sure he's a good person, and I have no ill will towards him. Bully Nate, I need to meet that dude in person. Because that motherfucker... Um, and he actually, uh, at first he reached out to me and this is when I was still on YouTube. Um, he reached out to me and cause he liked my work and I heard from so many people, Oh, don't, don't like trust this guy. He's a snake in the grass, whatever. That dude keeps it real. Like he's a, he's a good dude. He's uh he does his thing. And ultimately I think he's a good guy. And I need to meet his ass in person. So, Nate, if you're listening to this, fucking either get down here All right. or uh, Christian Gary. I'll hit you up when I'm up there because uh, the court. this shit needs to happen. What a great guy. <laughs> <sighs> no, I was in a good mood. Um, firstly, I will say... Um, what turned out to not be him, and I think it, it was discovered that yeah, it, it wasn't him. He wasn't it wasn't him that was behind all the all the shit that was going on in COH. Yeah, and uh, I did kind of lash out at him because I was helping with a thing at uh, at the Monster Factory, actually at the Wells Fargo Center. Um, but and I felt like I lashed out at him unfairly. But there was a lot of pent up frustration. Uh, before that as well just the guy not getting it and the guy not you know really being in the right mind i felt like you know there's there's living the gimmick and then there's just internalizing something to the point where it punches through your fucking sternum he did that he took it way too seriously he felt like he was the gimmick he was the show and just just never learned. Like, I was willing to work with the guy and just be like, you know what? Here's what you do. I'll do the talking. You do one thing. You say two words. But he didn't want to do what he was asked. And that's what gets you on my shit list. It's like, if you don't even want to do what you're 
asked? Like, one thing, you want to get your shit in, you want to do all your, you know, fancy schmancy things that you think you can do, but actually can't. Eh, I don't know. I've never met him in person. I don't know how he is, but man, the guy just haven't had many positive interactions. Right. With him. Um, AJ... But I, I can't condemn a person, you know, like, fuck. Good dude. Um, I want to. I I want to interact with him more than I do. But yeah, he's up in Connecticut or whatever. I guess my running joke with him is like, "Oh man, I didn't know you were black." Shit. Um. Just uh. Right. He's he's uh, a cool dude. And, Caleb uh, Blair, Chris. Oh, Cash, you need to talk more. Um, <laughs> sends me dick pics on Snapchat all the fucking time. No, it's it's it's, it's cool because he draws like faces on it, and it's like one one of, one of them. It was like he he even colored in the head to make it look like a little top hat. It was really fun. Um, I I just made that up. Anyway, uh, uh, Blair is a cool dude. Um, I think he wants to do the whole professional wrestling thing. If he does, he needs to commit to it. And I'll call him out on it right here, right now, man. If you want to, if you either want to do it or you don't. So I mean, get in the ring, brother. Like I mean, come, like message me when you hear this. I want you to succeed. I want to help. So All right. yeah, uh, man. If you want Steve. it, go get the it, accuracy. homie. I'm right there with you. A lot, yeah. Oh, he's 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 a good promo too. You know, like he's improved. I've 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 seen him improve. Yeah, and it was Steve. I'm Matt glad that Steve. he's in the position that he's in now. He can always get better. Uh, I'm sorry. Who's the next person? Steve is pff, like a brother to me. He's a great guy. Um, you know, him meeting him. Uh, for the first time at Best in the World 2012 uh, changed my life. It was like meeting him and Travis and feeling like really part of that group was, it was really cool. Um, He's super generous and whether or not he'll admit, because he's he's the same as me, where it's like he'll tell you that he's a piece of shit human being but ultimately he cares and he looks out for his own. And he's a good dude. Um, he has a funny way of showing it, and I feel like it's misinterpreted by many people at times. And I do think that he can get a little uh, full of himself at times, but it's it's nothing like it's nothing malicious. It's nothing that uh, he can't overcome. And honestly, I feel like he can do anything that he wants so long as he you know keeps plugging away. And really, that's the key. It's like, it will take time, but that dude can do anything he wants. Um, just a matter of how hard he's willing to work at it. And once he realizes what he's good at, what his wheelhouse is, just do nothing but that. And he'll All right. and he'll contribute two, two something names, to, this, uh, very completely different to this world of ours. Um, he's a good motherfucker. One, Ryan Carroll, who just came back to COH, beat me up. Okay. Yes, he did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's a he's a good dude. I met him once when I was working RH. Um, yeah. Yeah. I was I was collecting streamers, and I remember banging my shin on the on the ring apron as I was collecting streamers, and so apparently someone in the crowd heard it. I was like, "Oh my god, are you okay, <laughs> dude?" I was like, "Yeah." I was like, "You took the, you took a vicious bump yourself." I'm like, but no, no, I'm dead. I'm fine. As I limped away. Um, okay. Uh, but I met Carol that last, night, and he's a cool dude. Yeah, so nice. um, I wish I talked to him more. He's fine. Uh, Alex again, just a great, great guy. Um, distance separates us, but I feel like we're more similar than really anyone realizes. He's just such a good guy. Um, he is very driven and 
you can tell that he has passion for what he does. Um, and really, like, I'm looking for chances to get him exposure. Like, I'm thinking I want to, like, start promoting him to people in the business. So, because he's, he's talented, man. He's really good. As is, as is uh, Austin. So, you know, both of those guys are super cool and super talented. And, uh, and Alex, you know, he's if he's willing to work for oh, here, here, his success, odd, since they did, he can be anything he wants. Come back. Will you be I'm a part of the uh, he's smart enough. Oh, stay tuned, folks. Uh, well, Stu, it's been a pleasure. Guess you'll just have to wait and show. see, won't you? I finally got you on, and we got to learn some more about you. Oh, not a problem. Hey, thank you so much for having me, man. Go ahead. It's a. Uh, it, it's been great. I know that people have been asking uh, for me. Uh, <laughs> if I could plug one thing here, you want to follow me or my life? Of course you don't. But in case you do, in case you do, I'm on Twitter and Instagram, both at Stu the Announcer. Yeah, thank you. So there you go. Wish you the best of luck. Not just uh, in call, but in life. Wish the best for you. You as well, brother. Thank you for having me on.